Welcome, let's discuss how we can add square roots. In order for us to combine square roots, we need to make sure that they have the same value inside the root. Now let's demonstrate that by looking at the following expressions. In the first expression on the left, we want to get the value 3 square root of 5, and then we want to add 7 square root of 5. One thing to notice is that in the first term, the value inside the square root is 5, and in the second term, the value inside the square root is also 5. Because both terms have the same value inside the square root, then we can add them up. And the values that we add is 3 and 7. If you have 3 square roots of 5s, and then we add 7 square roots of 5s, then we are going to obtain 10 of those square roots of 5. On the example on the right, we have 8 square roots of 3, and then we want to subtract 2 square roots of 3. But notice that in the first term, the value inside the square root is 3, and in the second term, the value inside the square root is also 3. Because they have the same value inside the square root, then we can combine. And what we combine is the values outside of those square roots. So if we have 8 of those square roots of 3, and we take away 2, of those square roots of 3, we're going to end up with 6 of those square roots of 3. As long as they have the same value inside the square root, we can just combine the outside values of each term. Let's take a look at the following examples. We want to explore the idea of, well, what if they don't share the same value inside the square root? which in the example on the left, we have that scenario. Notice that within the first term, the value inside the square root is 75, and in the second term, the value inside the square root is 5. So if they don't have the same value inside the square root, does that mean that we cannot combine them at all? Before we make that conclusion, let's see if we can simplify some of those square roots. Let's start with the square root of 75. Now let's think, can we simplify the square root of 75? But notice that 75, we can write it out as 25 times 3. Now the second term that we have on the right, let's just bring that down. And by the rule of roots, if we are multiplying inside the square root, we can multiply by the square root of each number individually. So now we can rewrite this as 8 times the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. And this second term that we have on the right, let's just keep bringing it down. But we do know what the square root of 25 is. The square root of 25 is 5. So now we have 8 times 5 times the square root of 3. And the term on the right, let's keep bringing it down. On the left, they're all multiplying. So we can multiply the first two values, and that will give us 40. And this second term, let's keep bringing it down. And this is as far as we can go. We cannot write 3 as a multiple of a perfect square, and we cannot write 5 as a multiple of a perfect square. After this simplification, notice that we were not able to match the inside of the square root. Therefore, we cannot combine this expression. We can just keep it as it is. Let's take a look at the example on the right. The first thing that we notice is that they do not have the same value inside the square root. So before we make the conclusion of not being able to combine them, let's try to simplify each one of them individually. The value of 27, notice that we can rewrite it as 9 times 3. And the value of 45, notice that we can write it out as 9 times 5. So now we can apply the rule of roots. If we're multiplying inside the square root, we can just multiply the square roots individually. Let's bring down the minus. If we're multiplying inside the square root, we can just multiply each square root individually. So we have 2 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. So now let's substitute the square root of 9, which is 3. So now we have 5 times 3 
times the square root of 3 times 2, we do know the square root of 9, which is 3, times the square root of 5. We can multiply these two values, which will give us 15. And we can multiply these two values, which is going to give us 6. This is as far as we can go in terms of simplification, because 3 and 5, we cannot write it out as a multiple of a perfect square. And after the simplification, notice that we were not able to match the same value inside the square root. Therefore, we cannot combine these two terms. So this is as far as we can go. Let's take a look at the last example. Notice that the values inside the square root, they do not match. So we cannot combine them yet. Let's see if we can simplify those square roots. On my first expression, the value of 7, we cannot simplify that any further. So let's just bring this down. And on the second term, the value of 63, we can write this down as 7 times 9. In the second term, we can apply the rule of root. If we're multiplying inside the square root, we can separate it by multiplying each root individually. So let's bring the first term down. And now we can write this down as 4 times the square root of 7 times the square root of 9. This first term, let's bring it down. And instead of writing the square root of 9, let's substitute it with the 3. In the term on the right-hand side, notice that there are three multiplications. And the order does not matter on the multiplication. So let's just multiply 4 times 3, which is going to give us 12. So now note that after the simplification, we were able to write down the same value inside the square root. Then we can just add the values in front of the square root. 2 plus 12 gives us 14. So we're going to end up with 14 square roots of 7. Hello. If you would like to continue learning about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.